Hi everyone, Luca from agmphotography.co.uk and in this video I'm going to give you my review on the Nikon D800. Now the Nikon D800 came out uh, last year, 2012 and it was kind of a revolution when Nikon announced this because uh, when Nikon, yeah, did I say Nikon? Yeah. Uh, when Nikon announced this because obviously of that 36 megapixel sensor that no one saw Nikon will bring out. Uh, obviously there's always rumors before, before the announcement so everyone was expecting it. However, it, it was a bit of a surprise anyway because Nikon has never really been into that pixel, uh, megapixel chase with other uh, manufacturer and for them to come up with something that big, uh, bigger than anything else on, uh, as a DSLR on the market, it was quite of, a, of an astonishment and uh, so far reviews have been incredible. So uh, the, the way I wanted to do this review is really to give you a hands-on review. I'm not going to go into the um, special specs and how many frames per second because you can find this online and that's not what I wanted to do. What I wanted to do is give you <coughs> my review as a photographer, uh, as a wedding photographer and how I thought about it. So I had initially wanted to uh, do the review after a thousand picture and call it, and call it a 1000 photos with the D800 but with um, a kind of a, a wedding coming up, coming up I saw I'll wait a bit, do the wedding and do the proper review and I'm quite glad I did because I can tell you much more than I could have uh, before the wedding. Uh, first thing first, so what I wanted to say, uh, to cover is the ergonomic of the camera. When uh, the camera, when I took the camera out of the box, I saw first, wow, that's, that's quite a bulky camera, much bigger, no much bigger, bigger than the D700 in my eyes. Um, <clears throat> so, wow, okay, quite heavy as well. So it feels really, really good in your hand, well built. Uh, Nikon's bring a new design, which is kind of smooth all the edge. It looks very modern and it looks, it looks like a very, it's a good looking camera, it's not an ugly DSLR. Uh, the D700 I had before uh, was a good, was a really amazing camera but it was a bit rough on the side but um, when you look at aesthetic. <clears throat> so it's been well designed. Um, buttons, there are good things, there are some good things, there are some bad things. So I'll cover first the good things. So first you have four buttons here you uh, always used to have three buttons here and the good things about this is you have the quality wide balance and ISO which are um, settings you use quite often uh, quality I normally leave my own raw but if you shoot uh, different raw JPEG TIFF depending for the type of work you do it, quite, it could be quite handy uh, marketing uh, marketing I never use it uh, so what I do is I set up actually my uh, commander uh, flash commander uh, through this so it's very easy very quick access so uh, when I use <coughs> flash on uh, CLS I just pop up the flash click on the marketing button and this will bring me the commander mode so I can set up my flashes as much as I want uh, so very very quick you can obviously set it up to different uh, things uh, wh whichever your way of shooting is uh, you also still have the FN and preview button which you can customize to what you like. So I have the FN on matrix metering and the preview button. Um, no, I don't, I don't, I don't have an eye assignments yet for it. Uh, because I shot in spot metering, but sometime I may want to have a quick matrix metering to uh, do a shoot if the shadows and highlight are too strong. So it kind of try to do a mix. <coughs> uh, so the, the back of the camera is pretty much the same as uh, all the Nikon, very simple. So if you are a Nikon user and you're looking to upgrade to the 800, you won't get lost with this one. It's it's quite, uh, it's pretty much the same as it always used to be. The autofocus uh, lock over here, uh, the the little um, round thing here to actually choose your focus points, and then your zooming options, menu, uh, preview, and the bin here. Uh, as you can see, obviously I've got a different. Um, LCD screen cover, uh, that's something I could cover in another review, uh, I don't know yet, we'll see. And <clears throat> so 
aesthetic wise, yeah, it, it feels very good and it feels very balanced with any lens you put on it. Now, this is a Nikon D3. And as you can see, obviously, size wise is quite not that much of a difference. If you look here, it's a bit, obviously, uh, the Nikon D3 has that extra grip here. And the reason why I got this camera is to have this as a, a second camera when I do weddings. And it's true that it's good to have that extra thing, extra vertical option. So what I've done is I got a grip for the D800. So when I started to put the grip on, I'll show you now. <coughs> The grip, I uh, did a review on the grip, which is not the Nikon grip, it's the Fotix grip. Uh, you can uh, see my review from my previous video. So here it is. So now if you put it next to it, surprise, the Ni Nikon D D800 is much bigger now than the D3. And this to me is a bit of a problem. And this is why I found out when I put the grip. So what I did is I, I purchased the grip. Let me show you at the back here. So I purchased the grip and I took it out a couple of times and I found out that it was just too big. I didn't feel comfortable with it. Uh, some people may like it, I personally didn't and I took it off after using it a couple of times. So uh, I think this could be handy to have if you're doing work uh, like for example, a long, long time lapse where you need, you know, to take a few thousand pictures and having a second battery that will uh, go over the first one would be handy. To me personally, I don't really do this kind of work. Uh, even if I was doing I don't think I will go to an extent to go that far. And I would probably just take the battery out, put another one within two seconds is done. So to me, this is not a good option uh, because it's just it just becomes too big what's happening with the d3 or any uh, single number cameras from nikon they're made into one piece and it does feel like it's meant to be there when you put the grip on the d800 it feels like an extra it feels you can obviously feel the the, the difference between the, the two here when you pull it together but also it just doesn't feel part of the body like it is with the d3 or d3s or d4 and for that reason um, I had the same issue with the D700, it was really on the edge of me not using the grip because it was just making the camera too big and with the D800 I just, I just didn't want to use it so uh, when I did my wedding on Saturday I just left it home uh, and it's also nice to be able to have a smaller camera, lighter camera than something like this at a wedding because you hold your camera pretty much night, you know, all the time um, <clears throat> and when you actually switch between cameras, you can straight away see the difference, you know, oh, that's heavy. Uh, <coughs> so, obviously there, were, there are some good things there, there are some, some good things there. Um, in regard to the uh, D800, I'm just going to cover now the um, <coughs> uh, ISO performance. Is, ISO is very good. Uh, I used it up to 3200 and it did give me some very good results. However, the D3 do provide me better uh, ISO results. So when I had to go over 3200, I was using the, the D3. Um, the only problem with this is that when you look at the back of the screen of the D800, once you've taken a, a good picture, it's very hard to go back to the D3 and, and take a picture with it because the quality you get at the back of the screen of this one is incredible compared to the D3. D3 is amazing, it does, you know, the, the picture quality is really, really good, but the, the D800 really has the edge on picture quality, clarity and resolution of, of images. Um, <clears throat> but that's, uh, I'll cover this with the sensor. But ISO performance, I pushed it to 3200. Um, I could have probably pushed it to 6400, but I didn't really want to. I pushed it to 3200 and kept it there and pretty much lowered my speed. Now the problem with this is that with that big sensor you have, I find that keeping your speed as low as I should with the D3 uh, or D3S, it's a, a, a little more difficult. And if you look at my previous video on how to shoot a low shutter uh, handheld, you'll see the technique I use. And I use it with this one and it works perfectly. Uh, I was shooting, uh, I put a few pictures at the end with some settings and you'll see some pictures of shooting at 1 15th of a second. 
Now, 115 for the second, I don't have too much problem with the D3 um, or D3S. With D800, you come into really a fine line of not getting your pitcher sharp. And the technique I use is I, take, uh, I put in two bursts and I take three shots. And the middle shot is normally the one which is a sharp one because there is no interaction with the camera. My hands pre get pressed down for the first shot, second shot nothing happened, and the first shot I remove it. So the second shot is normally the sharpest one. But watch my video on, uh, on the sharp shot handheld and you'll understand more. So ISO, yeah, excellent, very, very good. Uh, focusing uh, is, is great. I mean, it, it focus anywhere on, in very low light conditions. Uh, I was doing the preparation shot and the lighting was really poor in the room. They have this kind of romantic um, <clears throat> rooms with very low warm lights or, you know, looking like this, it looks amazing. But when you come with your camera, uh, it can be a bit tricky, but this one had no problem. You can really, really focus in, in dark situation and you have no issue. So perfect on the focusing side. Metering. Um, Metering, I find it a bit tricky. No, not tricky, but different than the D3 or the D3S. The D3 or D3S, I know them very well, and I know exactly what's going to happen when I spot meter. On this one, I did. I was quite glad to have this camera for a couple of months before my first wedding, so I could do a few tests. And I find the spot metering very, very precise and very, uh, very well balanced in regard to highlight and <coughs> shadows. And that is very good, but it also creates an issue is that when you are spot metering on someone's head um, and there is a few highlights coming into the face, this will be picked up and your camera will all underexpose or overexpose to compensate for this. And it's the same when you're shooting a bride with a bright white dress. You've got to take in consideration that this camera will probably underexpose the rest of the picture because it's so much white. Uh, and it's the same when you are uh, uh, getting your meter from the suit of, of the groom. Uh, so that is definitely something to take in consideration and to test before you go out there and really, uh, really shoot. But the metering, once you get used to it, it's very easy to work with and it's so precise and so good that um, you have to get better. The camera got better from the D3 or the D700. The metering has got much, much better than it used to be. And to be able to obviously use this new technology, you have yourself to get better uh, and as you uh, at using it and get used to it. So that's uh, also very good. Um, the, what can I cover? Uh, the sensor obviously has something I want to cover in a minute. Um, the screen resolution here, um, <coughs> something. Oh, so, it, so it went from 3 inch to 3.2 inch. Now you don't really see the difference. I, I don't, you know, it's, a, so it's quite small. And when you look at the screen, you don't, you just don't really realize it. So <clears throat> that's, it's okay, but um, I suppose for video it's maybe a, a bit better or when you're using live view. Uh, the live view on this camera is exceptional because you can uh, change the aperture as you're working and the aperture will kind of show you the, the effect you're getting uh, in regard to depth of field or uh, exposure. So that's really, really good live view on it, the best I've used so far. Uh, the movie mode. Movie mode is brilliant. It really is. I mean, I'm, I have to shoot in my D7000 to show you the camera today, but um, I normally always shoot all my movie now from the D800 because it's so good. Because you're able to set up everything manually, your um, exposure and your audio, this makes it really, really easy to use. The D7000, for example, I, I'll have to use sensitivity here. I'm using sensitivity one, uh, which is the lowest, so I can um, edit it later and bring it, the level up to have a clearer uh, audio, but having a full manual audio settings really is handy. Uh, video quality, you can go up to 1080p 30 frames per second or 720p 60 frames per second. You also have the 20 24 and 25 frames per second settings if you wanted to. Uh, video quality is exceptional. I've taken actually a few videos at a wedding. Uh, I won't show it now because the wedding uh, picture has, haven't been uh, given to the, the bride and groom yet. I will show a couple of pictures at the end, but I won't show the videos yet. I'll do this in another video. 
um, <clears throat> but it was really, really good to use. And as I've used the video with the 70 to 200 VR tool, and having the DVR worked perfectly. I was handheld. I actually tried to get a monopod before the wedding, but I couldn't. Uh, I probably got myself a bit, uh, not enough uh, time to find it. But having a monopod uh, at the side of you could really quickly, you know, get it up, pull it on the monopod, and shoot some really good videos. And the video quality is just exceptional, really, really is. Um, obviously, I'm used to Nikon, no Canon. I know Canon uh, 5D Mark II does also great work with videos like the, the new Mac 3 now. But Nikon has never been really good with this. And now with the D800, they've kind of uh, bring up the level a bit. <clears throat> uh, the focusing on the video is still a problem. Uh, they just can't get it right. And I think this is a problem with all the DSLR. Uh, if you're serious about your video, you'll be probably manual focusing anyway. Uh, so I, I wouldn't really um, buy this camera for the focusing mode. I'll buy this camera for the video mode for sure, but not for the focusing. So something to know. <coughs> Apart from this, the, the sensor now. Uh, so yes, Nikon has made a big thing about the sensor, 36 megapixel. And I've got to say, uh, I was blown, out, blown away by, by the quality of the picture I was getting. Absolutely fantastic. You cannot compare the, the quality of this picture to any DSLR I've seen so far, um, or I've used personally. 36 megapixel, it's a lot. It takes a bit of memory, yes, it's true, but the, to compensate for the clear, clarity and resolution of these pictures, uh, I'm happy to even double the size of my uh, memory without a problem. <clears throat> uh, when I uploaded the pictures to the computer, uh, it's just such a pleasure to look at it. It's so crisp, looking on the 27-inch screen. It, it's so crisp, so clear. Resolution is amazing. You can focus in and just see each details. Um, it's good for cropping. I didn't really use it for cropping because I'm so used to work with 12 megapixels that I'm used to compose and recompose myself here and then when I'm shooting and I still believe that it's better and being able to know how to crop and keep that resolution is probably better um, <clears throat> but everyone has different way to work uh, it's the, the picture you get from it is exceptional I mean as a wedding photographer I don't think I can find anything better than this and of course you can go for the medium format which will provide you a better quality picture, may possibly better tone as well, uh, better dynamic range, dynamic range uh, something I will talk about. <coughs> um, but as a DSLR, being able to shoot 5 frames per second in a small body like this and with all that this packed, you just cannot find anything better for wedding photography in my views as an icon user. Now, I'm not saying that Canon 5D Mark III is not up for the job. Absolutely, it's an amazing camera. I really do like Canon, uh, but I'm an Icon user, and as an Icon user, I would pick this over any other camera for a wedding. I've used a D3, I've used a D3S. D3S was incredible for everything, but this just has the edge when it comes to picture quality. And at the end of the day, when I, bring, when I offer my work to my clients, this is what matters for them is the picture quality and this is the way I work. I work for my clients and whatever is best for my clients is what I do. I have a D3 on the side for you know a backup situation where I need that extra ISO, I need that extra speed. Uh, the burst mode on, on the D3, it, you know, it's it's quite um, I'll show you this one. Um, go into manual mode. <coughs> So yes, th there is a uh, quite big difference in speed, but obviously this camera has much more to bring into your card than this one has. So uh, that's something to consider. Uh, what I'll do is I'll post a few pictures I've taken here recently with this uh, personal picture and um, work pictures, and, and you can see exactly the quality I'm talking about. Uh, the green tent uh, that talk people are talking about, yes, I did have the green tent, but it kind of went away after uh, a few hundred shots. I don't know why. I have no experience any of, uh, focusing problem. I have no experience any issues with it. It's quick enough for me. Uh, it's amazing. It's a fantastic camera. And if you are a wedding photographer or portrait photographer and you take your time when you do your shots, I don't think there is anything better for you as an icon user. So any question, let me know and uh, subscribe. Cheers. See ya.